So what happens when you can no longer afford the payment on your car? What are your options and what can you do about it? I'm Joe Chavarria and we're going to unpack that today. Disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer and this should not be considered legal advice. One should seek appropriate counsel for one's own scenario. Please note, this video is directed towards viewers in the United States. If you are concluding business outside the United States, we highly encourage one to find and understand obligations regarding one's disclosure. So realistically, it's a very tough situation to deal with because once you drive off the lot when you first buy that vehicle, it depreciates in value right away. So let's say it was a $20,000 vehicle. One week later, it's probably worth like $15,000. And so, you know, and you're financing the original amount. And so if you are at the situation where you can no longer afford the payment, let's say two, maybe three years down the road, you may be upside down to some degree, or you may not really have any equity to where you can just freely sell your vehicle back to the dealership or sell it outright and not have to owe anything. So that's a tough one. We're gonna talk about what you can do there. So there's really two, maybe three options here. You know, one option would be to go to a different dealership. You probably still need a car, but maybe you want something a little bit cheaper, you know, with a lower payment. And so, you know, maybe going to another dealership and seeing if you can roll some of that negative equity into a new loan with a new vehicle on a new vehicle, and maybe that'll help lower the payment. Second option, depending on how strong your credit is, it would be very similar to that deal there, but instead of going into a new auto loan or a new, you know, new purchase scenario, you would go into a lease. So you would roll some of that negative equity into the lease. Why I like this option a little bit better if you can do it is because when your lease is over, that negative equity is gone. When you're in a purchase scenario, if you decide if the same thing happens in this transaction again, to where two or three years, you're like, I don't really want this vehicle. I can't afford it. I need to get another vehicle. You're going to probably still have some negative equity because remember you carried some negative equity from the other transaction and then this vehicle depreciates in value too it, it always happens and so it kind of could make the problem a little bit bigger or just prolong the scenario that's why leasing you know taking getting rid of that negative equity in a leasing scenario may be a better option for you third option which again kind of not much of an option i know for some people for some people maybe it is is to basically sell the vehicle and whatever negative equity you have, basically, you know, just just pay off what you owe, um, you know, and, and see what you can work out there with with the bank. And so therefore, you can kind of walk away from it, you know, preserve your credit as much as you possibly can and not have any, you know, negative debt following you for months and years to to come. Now, a common scenario that sometimes get people in trouble is, you know, they will essentially give that vehicle or loan that vehicle to a family friend or just a friend and they'll take over the payments. And this is a good idea in theory. However, in practice, there's some obstacles you may run into, such as that person, again, it's not really their vehicle technically, so they don't really have any skin in the game. And so they may run into a scenario where they're not gonna be that motivated to pay on time. And then you kind of take a friendship into a scenario where it's like, hey, you're kind of screwing me over a little bit because you're not paying it on time, you're hurting my credit, you're not giving the cash so I can pay it. Then it kind of gets a little awkward. So again, good idea in theory, but in practice, it doesn't always work out perfectly. So I just wanted to share that. So really, if you're really wanting to get out of the payments or just take a break from it and just kind of kind of dial things back a little bit because the car is pretty expensive, you know, see if you can get it sold to, to another dealership, to a private party, if you have uh, maybe some equity into it or maybe the negative equity is not too much and you can kind of deal with that and work out the, the balance with the bank. Let's say that you, you can sell the car for 16 grand um, and you owe about 17 grand on it, then that little difference, a thousand dollar difference Maybe you can make smaller monthly payments to the bank with that or pay it off. And, you know, that way you don't have to worry about having payments, you know, for a longer period of time. You can kind of get rid of it and uh, deal with the, the remaining balance at that point. Um, again, you can also go back to, to a different dealership, try to get a smaller vehicle, maybe downsize. 
try to get something newer that way the interest rate will be lower so like newer and cheaper if that's a possibility so your interest rate will be lower your payment could be lower and it'll be easier to absorb that negative equity into that new account so what happens if i want to return the car do i get a refund it's actually a good question and i've never been asked that so that's a good question so unfortunately no all the money you've paid towards that loan or towards that agreement is non-refundable so if you decide two three years later you don't want that vehicle you maybe just want to give it back to the dealership say hey i'm kind of done with it i'm tired of it done you know the payments are too high or the vehicle kind of sucks whatever the case may be unfortunately it's not where there's not a scenario where the bank or the dealership can say okay well since you don't want it here's the money back and main reason is because of the terms that are agreed to you know prior to taking that vehicle off the car lot and so there's a like i said before there's a bank in the transaction that is going to receive x amount of dollars over x amount of time your monthly payments broken down between principal and interest and so your, your your interest payment that's already that's interest already applied towards the loan and uh, the bank all that principal payment has been applied towards bringing down that balance so whatever you agreed to the banks are already you know gonna get that money one way or the other and so you know when you decide you want to give that vehicle back or you don't want it anymore that money does not come back to you that money is is well spent and well gone because the, you know the bank already took that money and you're not getting that money back the, the bank wins in that transaction even if you stop paying the bank still kind of wins we'll talk about that in another video but unfortunately you know again to repeat it all that money is is gone Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Any questions related to this topic, drop them in the comment section below. Again, I'm Joe Chavaria. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.